Hello and welcome to Concentric Circles, the show about being a 21st century creative. My name is Jim Tramontana. I am joined here today with the illustrious Vinny Fiorello, John O'Diener, and Obi Fernandez. Gentlemen, how are you today? Wonderful. Yeah. I mean, That's excellent. You should be more than wonderful, John. Oh, I hear there's some interesting news in your uh, recent past. So I've decided to wear rings. Um, <laughs> Well, specifically one on my left hand. <laughs> nice. I got married. Nice. Uh, uh, Mazel tov. Congratulations, thanks. Tutor. Thank Now you, you can join us in our, our, our wedding, you know, uh, mar marital bliss. Yeah. <laughs> I had a great moment. Uh, my neighbor who is part of a lot of uh, neighborhood gossip with mowing lawns and who's not doing it properly and stuff came over. Nice. And uh, I was... So this is like a week ago and I'm like, yeah, you know, like my fiance and he goes, Oh, you're getting married. I'm like, yeah, actually tomorrow. And he's like, I don't know, man. I don't know if it's worth it. And I was like, <laughs> like, and it's like a stranger. And I'm like, excuse me, Craig. <laughs> and he's just like, yeah, you know, I, I went through some stuff and then he ended up hanging out for an hour outside and I like half mowed my lawn and he was giving me like marriage advice. And then it ended with him talking about how, His friend's a drummer too, but he wanted to play bongos at this outdoor show thing. And he waited five hours and the band didn't let him do it. And he left. And I was like, what a great conversation. <laughs> Thanks, man. I'm going to keep mowing my lawn. Please go away. <laughs> man, so, yeah. great story. It's been eventful. <laughs> so you invited him to the wedding and he officiated the whole thing. And it was great, right? Yeah. And then I accidentally married him. Yeah, yeah. A, lot, a lot happened. <laughs> I love when people like just start interjecting like just life advice. Could be anything. Like, you know what I mean? And just start talking to you about, like, how it all works. And it always comes back to, like, the friend who screwed it all up. And then, if you, like, <laughs> and then I like to just keep peeling the onion, right? And then come to find out that, like, they're really the friend, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, this guy really ruined my relationship, whoever it was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No way. Dude, I would never let anyone, like, five minutes, like, I have, like, a five-minute limit for real, right? Like, I have... 30 minute, like, th like, okay, here it is. I have 30 second time for demos when people are like, Hey, you want to listen to my band? I go 30 seconds on it. Right. I got five minute max with strangers. Someone comes up and want to talk. It's five minutes. There's nothing more like, okay, let's wrap it up and let's go. And then I have 30 minutes for food. If I have to go <laughs> more than 30 minutes to go to a restaurant, then I won't do that either. So that's my like hard limitations as an adult. Right. I love so, that. Like, <laughs> it's so good. What so what, it explains so much, actually. <laughs> <It really does. laughs> on the, 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 the end of uh, at least a couple of those. <laughs> you have, actually. <laughs> you also carry a buzzer around. I always wondered that. <laughs> yeah, I you think know, my, wife has a I, my, my body clock is naturally attuned to 30 seconds, five minutes, and 30 minutes, sir. I love it. <laughs> well, that's like the Larry David thing where like he'll be hanging out with someone and he just goes like... I think we're done here. And he just says it. And then they're like, Oh, okay. And then they have to split part. <laughs> yeah. That was like, that was like always great about like shows though. Like if you were like playing somewhere and you were talking to someone and like, it, it kind of got like a little freaky, like you could always like sort of like slowly start just walking backwards and be like, this is great. So awesome. You know, but like, I got to like, warm, yeah. warm up. I got to go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, you know. But now sometimes, you know, it's just like, Oh, I, I just we have to hang here for a minute. I do. I do not. I do not allow myself to get punished. I've been. <laughs> I've literally been around so long of people punishing me, like that. I've. I've like just put lines in the sand of like I am not getting punished. And like if someone comes up and it's like goes for the full talk, I'm. I'm five minutes. I'll go for the ride, right? And and then it'll be over. I've seen you, I've seen you do this. And one thing I'm going to call out that I respect really hard, even on phone calls and like phone meetings, like if we're on a meeting and, or like we're just talking or whatever, and you're like, you're through, you're like, all right, well, you know, I'm going to go. And, and it's, it's like respect. That's great. I wish I could do that. Like in so many places of my life. <laughs> when, it's, when it's time to go, it's time to go. Yeah. <laughs> we're done here. Remember that end of this episode when we're like kind of floundering around and wondering when we're gonna like really wrap it up it'll just we'll just kick it to Vinny and he'll be like I think we're done here so. yeah. <laughs> it's it's so good it's so good although I do love seeing like I, I I would enjoy seeing you do it at shows like with people 
you give like the head nod, I'm interested, you know, and there's been times like we're, we're going someplace. Hey, you ready? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite. <laughs> See you later. Do it. It's true. I'm gonna I'm gonna adopt that philosophy. I'm throwing it in. I feel like that's a, that's a productivity hack right there that people need to. Yeah, man. Like, okay, but you guys are like just focusing on this. It's the 30 minute driving for food thing. Like, <laughs> if something could be more than 30 minutes, you're not going, man. Like, don't go because it becomes so much more. Like yeah. anything before 30 minutes, like there's a there's a rib place. It's 20 minutes away. And Okay. okay, I'll still go with it. Hey, there's a rib place. It's 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 38 minutes on on you know maps now. I'm not gonna go there. <laughs> Three minutes for food, and that's Wait, it. So how, how are you on like if there's a wait to get in once you get there? Is that like Ooh, a deal breaker? Good question. Uh, it all it all, it really depends on if I'm like okay, I I want to have that, or if I'm only in the town for our part, you know, particular like small time, like. If you're on tour and this is it, I'm getting the donut right now in a 30 minute wait or a 50 minute wait where I'm not getting it at all. Mm-hmm. Like I, I, I'll wait if I really want it and, and I'm not going to be there again for a while. But uh, usually if I'm local and I roll in and they're like, it's a, it's a 40 minute wait. I'm like, mm, no, let's, let's go. no, no yeah. local waits for a long time. No, especially now. Like everything's yeah. takeout. So like, why am I waiting for 45 minutes? Like, dude, you should be prepared for takeout. Like that's all you're doing. I feel like all of us were equal parts, like used to instant gratification of I'm going to be home anyway. I want this movie on my TV. I want, cause like you're home, who cares? But then the other part of it is like all of us touring musicians that are stuck sitting around. It's such a trip. Cause our brains have to like recalibrate to be like, I, I don't have my excuse like, oh, I like, what are you doing next week? And I used to be like, I, I don't know. And then now I'm like, nothing. Shit. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not doing anything anymore. Deal's done. The deal's done, man. The deal's done. <laughs> so that being said, because I was about to go on a food tangent in terms of waiting, but I won't, especially <laughs> local food. I will flip the, uh, you know, the switch Vinny, my man, what are we talking about today? You know what? Here's the thing, right? So in any type of project, in any creative's life, sooner or later, you're working with people and you're hoping and you're praying that they're cool people, but you're faced with that uh, when you're dealing with a team of people, everyone wants their thumbprint on it. Everyone wants their voice to be heard. And frankly, it should be, man, because that's like the, the, the good part of what teams are. You're taking the best of each person and their contacts or their headspace and you're pushing it together and you come out the other side and it's a beautiful thing. Right. But uh, our guest tonight, man, when I read the project that he's on and there's so many like, dude, when wow. I say there's a lot of arms, there's a ton of arms and it makes our our project inevitable to like, dude. Like we're a miniature of that, right? So uh, our guest tonight, so many arms, and I think it's a perfect time to talk about teams and how do you work within them and the confines and the good parts uh, and just raw, just teamwork in general, man, because that's what has to happen. Like when you're together and you're on a project, you have a bunch of different minds and you have a bunch of different creatives that are in there. Let's talk about teams. So we're going to talk about teams, teamwork, connect. All right. Yes. And our guest today is the illustrious Patrick Edwards, whose debut novel, Space Tripping, won the 2016 Nerdist Space Opera Contest and hit the shelves in 2017. Since then, he has had two short stories published in writing block anthologies, Escape and Deception. His sequel, Space Tripping 2, the second one, is <laughs> due late in 2020. In the interim, he co-wrote the new 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons campaign book title the Red Opera, which is an adaptation of the album and stage show of the same name by the orchestral metal band Dia Morte. Patrick is also the co-host of Let's Rewatch podcast on the Certain POV network and a cast member on the Happy Hell Hour Descent into Al- Averness <laughs> real play stream on Geekly Incorporated Twitch channel. I murdered that last bit, but that doesn't mean Patrick's not a badass. Patrick, come into the 
circle, man. I, I don't know what you were going to do. I didn't expect you to read that whole thing on air when you asked me for a bio. So I, I don't know. I guess I don't know in hindsight what else would you have done with it. But, <laughs> I mean, what's interesting so, is he memorized the whole thing. And that's like. And he's like one breath, too. That was some lung capacity. <laughs> wow. It wasn't him reading it off the screen. He was just really concentrating on a focal point. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me, y'all. You yeah, know thanks what? for being here. That's a lot going on, my friend. When he was like in his like marathon description, and Jim was like, and he did this, and he did that, and yeah. thing, and like, I went, I started to like kind of like trip out for a second and go, man, there's a lot of shit going on, man. Like, and I, I'm stoked to talk about it because when I when I read the bio, I went, wow. So it's uh, the Red Opera, right? It's a, a role playing game, uh, mm-hmm. but on top of all that. It's based on a metal band from Chicago's record, and but yet the Budapest Orchestra did the orchestral sort of uh, yeah. uh, the compositions of that, and they started to stack on from there. I'm like, yeah, let's let's talk about this tonight, man, because this is gonna be good. But first, this is what I want to know because as someone who doesn't play role playing games, I want you to explain to me, yeah. In layman's term, what a role playing game is. I talked to Jono about it. I'm like, do you have a good description? He's like, let's ask. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> no. So, what I'll say is, um, like, a or TTRP, like tabletop role playing game, the most commonly known one is Dungeons and Dragons. There are hundreds of different varieties now, but essentially, what I like to describe it is it's collaborative storytelling where you're working together to tell a story with a group of friends or acquaintances. Um, and you essentially have one person who is your narrator and then everyone else is playing a specific role, a cast. And it's kind of improv collaborative storytelling where uh, in super simplistic terms, a session of D and D is simply the, the game master sets the scene, describes the scene you're in. And then you as players and characters can theoretically do whatever you want um it might end up in result in your death <laughs> if you do it badly but you can theoretically do anything you want and it's just a real fun it, it's honestly it's something i am not I, I know most people that i know have have been playing it since they were kids or young i kind of came into it late as an adult but it's honestly the I, i'm gonna put it up against any board game or video game or any just the most raw fun game time you can have with friends with groups of people i think playing a game and yeah, were you end up <laughs> <laughs> and i was gonna ask too so i know a lot of people in the writing world are obsessed with D specifically mm-hmm. um were you a writer before or is that what influenced you to want to start writing this kind of stuff? I was a writer before getting into this specifically. And then I was a casual fan and player before. So it's one of, it's really interesting is I'm also a big fan of podcasting and listening to podcasts. Um, <laughs> I've told this before. What's very interesting about with D and D is I was actually listening to podcasts about D and D before I ever actually played the game. Mm. Um, <laughs> Well, cause here's the thing. And there's a ton of them now. There's tons of shows and stream shows and podcasts. And there's a really, the most famous one, um, it's called critical role. And it's even being, I think it was, it might be adapted by Amazon into a show now. So there's a huge market. Cause again, what it ends up being is like a radio play, like an improv radio play, especially if you have people who are uh, halfway decent to good voice actors who are playing the roles and you have accents and you're in your act and you're getting into the character and you're committing, um, so I would listen to a few of these podcasts and they were really funny and fun. And sound like these people, it was very, it was an entertaining story that they were basically weaving together on the fly. Uh, and it sounded like there's having a shit ton of fun. Am I allowed to swear in here? Of yeah. course. Fuck. Yeah. I love H E A. You are. Um, so it just sounded like so much fun. So I, I really wanted to explore that a little more. Uh, and then specifically as it pertains to the Red Opera, again, that's not something I, I think I was headed in my head that I wanted to try and make something. I didn't go and necessarily seek it out. It is a kind of a long walk I, to get how we got here to this point. And it's really doing really well. Today was a huge milestone on Kickstarter, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, the, it's funny. It's very fortuitous. We're recording this today because I'll, I'll just 
Spo- cut to the chase. The day <laughs> the day of us recording this, we broke a hundred thousand dollars on Kickstarter. Yeah, you yeah. slayed on your Kickstarter, buddy. and we still have yeah almost thirteen days to go. So it's yeah, pretty wild. Thank you so much. Um, so as uh, was mentioned, uh, my first book, Space Tripping, came out. I connected with another writer named Rick Hines. Uh, both of our books came out from the same publisher around the same t- uh, his a little bit before mine. We're both originally from Chicago. Rick still lives there. We, you, you, you make internet friends. You link up with people on social media or email. He came to my first book signing and we really hit it off. And he just kind of hung out all day and just kind of shooting the shit. So we just stayed in touch over the years and would talk and uh, about what each other was working on and what were our next steps in our careers and our writing careers going forward. And then uh, last, almost exactly a year ago, he and I were talking He's like, hey, you know what? I got something that um, I might want to talk to you about that I might need your help that we, you might be a good compliment to me because it's A, it's a lot of work and I don't want someone who's another me. I want someone who's different strengths and it was this, the Red Opera. So the band Diem Morte, the, the sort of the lead frontman, they're, they're on Dark Star Records label. The, the frontman is Drake is his name or his stage name and he and Rick are real life friends. And they were hanging out and um, the drummer from Cradle of Filth was hanging out with them too. And they were talking about like how cool the stage show would be if it was adapted into a playable campaign. And they, they had all this like lore and backstory that they had always, they'd been talking about for a long time and building up around the story. And there is a lot of crossover in the metal scene and D and D fandoms. So Rick and Drake were like, well, let's, I'm going to do this. Rick's like, I'm a writer. I know D and D and gaming. Rick is insanely skilled and experienced in RPG gaming. He has run, he's, he's been like a DM GM for over 50 different game systems. He's, he writes GM tips for geek and sundry and nerdist and um, gilding light for all these different, you know, big time uh, sites in that industry, in that world. So he said, yeah, I'm going to do this. Let's do this. And, and then he started it a little bit. He said, okay, this is a lot of work. <laughs> I might need someone. So we just happened to be talking. He's like, you know, this is kind of, and Vinny, what you're saying about teamwork, it's really, it's crazy that we got here because there were a lot of risks taken by a lot of people involved in the sense of Rick and I were friends and casual friends, but we never worked together on anything. Um, and something as complex as creating like a D&D campaign where you're building out an entire world and creating a whole story for players to play through and, and stuff and monsters for them to fight and all that stuff. Um, he just like, I, I get a vibe that maybe we'd be very complimentary to each other, like your, or your strengths and my strengths. And then, and it worked out really, really well. So that was the start was he, it was me and Rick. Uh, and then we had this other writer who, who was helping us here and there named Joe Asfani, who's great. And we just started, okay, well, let's just write this thing and then we'll figure it out from there. So we worked, like crazy for a couple of months and then we had a final draft in january and the band loved it they were head over heels they've they've they're actually changing some things in their show when when you can do live shows again (laughs) um (laughs) to kind of fit and and the lore has really been expanded and then it became a okay what do we do with this thing now because it ended up a lot longer than we inspect we we're just gonna do this little side thing it's gonna be just a little fun we'll self-publish it throw it up you know to our fan bases and our newsletters and and then it blossomed into this whole big uh, epic campaign with the stretch goals that we've already unlocked. The whole book is going to be about 120 to 140,000 words. It's going to be a big tome of adventuring. Um, it's like your bio. <laughs> <laughs> Again, didn't know he was going to read it on the air. I feel kind of guilty about that. Now. <laughs> um, and so then we said, okay, we have to get this thing created. We need artwork. We need to get it printed. Are we just going to self-publish it and like eat the cost ourselves and hopefully make it back? Are we going to try and sell it to a big publisher or just whatever? And then again, through mutual acquaintances. Um, and then actually the, the head of the studio had his, he was a writer too, had, of Apotheosis, had his first book, Jameson, uh, published by the same publisher as Rick and I. So it was through mutual channels. We connected with them, talked to them about what we were looking to do. They fell, They read it, fell in love with it. And said, we want to, you know, be like the publisher of this, the studio production studio. So we're going to do the art and we're going to do the layout and we'll do the printing of it. 
and they have phenomenal artists. And, and when you talk about teamwork, we are global. So <laughs> because the two lead artists, David and Carlos, David's in France, Carlos uh, is in South America and um, Apotheosis is in Boulder, Colorado. And then yeah, Rick's in Chicago. I'm in Ohio. It, it's we're thank God for technology, but um, it's all been a lot of moving parts. Yeah. And I, I'm honestly stunned that we're here today. I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I, we worked our butts off. So part of me is like, fuck yeah, we should be here today. But also it's like, I can't believe we're here right now and it's going this well. So did you think that, you know, cause it, it is a very specific thing, right? It's, mm-hmm. you know, and it's overly specific. So were you at, at any time going, well, I hope that everybody sort of lands in the same spot, right? Because artists, you know, are different than writers for sure. You know, when you're explaining something, you have a specific thing in your mind that you're writing mm-hmm. through. And when an artist reads that, they're putting, you know, push it through their own filter, right? So like at any point in time, when you have a big team like that, like, are you going, well, this is kind of not what I was thinking or, Hey, this is exactly what I'm thinking or shit. Like, I hope they think what we're trying to do and get across like, uh, the team thing I, I I've always found, and and I'm asking if it was in the case of you, right? That y- you have everybody has their like sort of uh, thumbprint that they want on the project. That I was part of it, you know. And sometimes that trips up people in content and and being okay with stretching something or being okay with oh, I was I didn't want that, but. I'm going to stand up for it now and I want it in there or say, okay. So in the case you have a publishing house that have their own staff writers, right? Uh, Not staff writers, staff artists, right? They have printers that they have to deal with. They have a dude, you're right in the publishing world. It's crazy how much like they have going on. So, but you have uh, another writer that's your partner. You have a band that you have ultimately is the one that's sprinkling everything down on the creative web, right. Of, of content. Uh, And you just, as a writer have to hope that you're landing on everything. Right. And during this process so far, like how has there been a moment where you went, everybody's on the same page and it feels so good or man, like, okay, we have to rethink and come back to the table and, have it explained. And I'm, I'm not like trying to dig at it, but I'm saying when you have such a big team, do you find that people are fighting for their thumbprint more? As far as the thumbprint, I'll say, oh, you, the answer is, is it this or this? The answer is yes, it's both. Because um, we <laughs> definitely we definitely had, you know, moments where, where not difficult phone calls or conversations where um, parties would get a little bit frustrated with each other. And, it was important to try it. And, and I'll just throw myself under the bus. I've been on both sides of that. I've been on where I felt someone, you know, I maybe went too far with my, you know, cause in the heat of the moment, or I feel like I'm not being heard, but it doesn't, you know, it, it's just, you have to be very conscious of being respectful towards each other and making sure everything is laced with compassion and empathy when you talk and give feedback on, and uh, whether it's the way something's written or the way the art, if it's not what you're hoping for and, or what you're liking, but, and it's one of those things where we are, we were very fortunate that by and large, it was a very, very positive process. And if, you, if you've taken a look and then like the layout, the book is gorgeous. The artwork is utterly gorgeous. Absolutely. Um, I couldn't have been happier with how that all the look of it all turned out. It looks so beautiful. And we even have like a limited series where there's hand carved leather bound versions of it. People can back and get. Um, so they did such a good job, but absolutely. It was not a perfect. We're all going to hold hands the whole time through, right. For this whole, the whole, the last nine months it's, um, there are definitely moments where there's frustrations, right. And you're tired and everyone, and, and, and it was really, really important and I think we did a really good job is when we kind of started to go down those roads and there would be some frustrations or some butting of heads. We, I think everyone involved did a really good job of pumping the brakes, remembering we're all on the same team. We all have the same goal and like, let's just chill out. Let's talk. Let's make sure we're using respectful language with each other, you know, with each other and then keep moving forward. Cause at the end we're all trying to get to the same place. And honestly, you know, it, it's, it's where you want it to be. It was that final stretch right before September 1st when we went live. 
it felt very it was actually very clean very good we're like good we got this we're ready to go let's knock it out of the park um so honestly i think organization Patios did a really good job of that, of, organ- of organizing the process where we did all of this through uh, Discord, actually. And we had a whole channel, like a closed, locked off channel. But then there were tons of sub channels. So everything had it, every topic had its own thread, right? To keep it all organized where art had its own thread, layout design, marketing stuff, Kickstarter, like creating the Kickstarter page, um, a page for like, you know, what other entities or collaborators are going to try to, re- you know, merchandise. So everything had its own specific and it kept the conversations organized. And it's like, if you're going to talk about this subject, go to that channel. Don't come in this channel, you know, to keep it all organized. And then always, always, always make sure that you are communicating, over communicating, being very descriptive in your communication. And again, being respectful and compassionate with how you communicate. And that'll solve a lot could have a chance to happen i mean organization in something like that has to be you know the number one priority because there's so many moving parts to it that you know you have to have it there come to it and they want to go let's talk about i have an idea about marketing you know you have that spot for it and it's mm-hmm. organized in a way where everybody's in there and i found that doing i i like and you can ask obi in this and, and jono too I like doing everything step by step by step by step. I don't mm-hmm. like to jump around and start put, pushing everything everywhere. I like a nice linear project. I, I have to make sure this one's taken care of before I go to the next and I build it like that. And that's my organization is just a linear way to build something out. Uh, yeah. not, not necessarily a, a, a bunch of things, but the, the thing for me that I was kind of tripped out, like being a musician, being a, a long-term band member, I know that it's hard to get a band on the same page, right? So now having the band on the same, trying to get the band on the same page and then having writers come in and then, you know, artists and publishing house and everything. I, I was tripping out on that because I know it's <laughs> yeah. so easy just to go, hey, are we going to get pizza tonight with a pepperoni or are we going to get it with sausage on it? And it's an hour and a half conversation on I, I, I don't like sausage. You always do yeah. this to me. I don't know why. Like, but that just is what the world uh, can do. <laughs> our saving grace in that respect is that uh, Rick, my co-writer, and Drake, the the front, the lead of the band, are good friends who have known each other for a long time. So Rick could be, they could be very, very blunt and candid with each other. <laughs> and, and then also, you're like, it's like, oh no, it's cool because like actually everybody's vegan, no meat. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, as you were talking about everything and like, you know, Vinny and I kind of try to keep this ethos, right? Where like you're working on these big picture things, you're building these worlds, you're building this like universe. We just try to keep moving the needle forward. Mm -hmm. So we always kind of go back and revisit, okay, is the infrastructure strong? And on top of that, you know, are we, are we moving the needle forward? Are we seeing progress? Sorry, I'm hanging out out (laughs) in the hood, but, um, The thing that I was going to say, on top of everybody on your team being together, you're also like driving everything to a very specific audience that Mm -hmm. is like super opinionated, right? That has absolutely everything to say with the how and what you're doing. And I'll even take it one step forward. Like they'll actually start to tell you what you were probably thinking in terms of creating something too, right? (laughs) Mm -hmm. Like, so how did you guys as a unit um, and it sounds like the like the like the production house was kind of like a really big help for you guys as well. Um, how did you guys sort of keep dialing into like that that fan base um, to keep moving the project forward? You know. Yeah. So we did uh, play testing was a big help in that regard. So a lot of it would be done maybe offline. You know, just people we know personally. But then I we would ran I ran a few uh, live streams where you would play through if not necessarily part of the main story because you kind of want to keep that you don't want to give that all away but or you'd make uh i I created we created these different mini adventures and side quests in the same setting so you get a feel for what this game what this adventure is going to be like and then you bring on people that you know and trust and also have followings and, and i did a few twitch sessions where we'd live stream and play through and you see how that goes in real time right how how the mechanics work of the game is this puzzle that the players have to figure out 
is it solvable? Is it, you know, that, that perfect level of challenging where it's solvable, not too easy, not too hard. Um, when, if they're fighting a, a, an enemy, a bad guy, you know, do you have the, do you have the, the numbers, you know, the math as it set? Cause again, don't want it too easy or too challenging. Cause if it's too easy, that's not fun. If you just hit it one time and it dies and it's also not fun if it kills you like that, you know, <laughs> like, uh, game over. So that was super helpful from a gaming standpoint. And then one of our collaborative partners, just as a, kind of an informal thing but they're great we, we have this this group this other independent group called 2c gaming um they are they were they are were and are doing a lot of like number crunching for us as far as you know because the numbers D D, it's very numbers it's the stats what are the stats of the monsters and the players and you want to make sure that that's all balanced because that's definitely something that the fan base will let you hear about if it's out of whack yeah <laughs> Dude, yeah. that, that's for sure. I I went and and looked through your Kickstarter first. Let me let me ask: Is this your first Kickstarter that you've done? Yes, mm-hmm. man. Like I, I went through it, and just the 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 art alone, and sort of the motion graphics that were later on, layered on top of it, and everything that read through. I just went, man, this is professional as fuck dude like i was yeah. i tripped out i tripped out on it i was like there's so many le- what i took away from your kickstarter page there's so many layers to it that i went how fucking cool is this you know it's like it, you have you know the metal band and then you have the the budapest orchestra that did sort of the soundtrack mm-hmm. you know the more the dramatic soundtrack to it right yep. yeah the different art you know the different artists that were involved you have the writers that were involved you have the books the hard copy stuff i was i just dove in and i went right on man this is this represents in my opinion a lot of hard work by a lot of different people with their shit together that when they hit, we're going to go on Kickstarter and that door opened that people responded in the community and went, I I have to be a part of it. And that's a great fucking feeling, man. Like whether it's the Kickstarter or whether it's a a thousand other things that you could do amongst a team, when you reach that moment and you let people in Mm -hmm. and people, yeah. And people embrace it. Man, that that to me, like, it, it makes me like, kind of like, yeah, yeah, this is what I want yeah. to be a part of it, right? I, we're blown away. But it's one of those things where we're just all so very committed. I'm a, I mean, Jim, sorry, I'm a workhorse. Like I, uh, Vinny, you were talking earlier about like linear. I, I like that too, because I'll have so many different things and I'm already, my head is swimming. I'm like, all right, what's our, what's my next move? What's the next thing I'm doing? Um, but if I have like a, an action item to do list, I am a work horse. I am a, I will like pound. If you give me a list of, it's like, all right, write me a, you know, write this for me, edit this thing, do this. And it's like, this is the priority. Bam, bam, bam. I can, I can laser focus and just put my head down and be just like a, a grunt about it and just <laughs> grind it out. I'm, I'm a grinder with that stuff. And I, and I, and I think everyone, we have a, a group of people that are really focused on, this is our job. This is what we want to do. This is, this is what, we are, you know, professionals about it, and we demand a certain level of we ex- we we put a lot on ourselves of we, as far as from a quality standpoint. Like we expect if we're going to do this and we're going to pour so much time and effort into it, it's going to be fucking awesome. Because I don't want to waste your time either. Yeah, of course. If you're going to get if you're going to buy our pro, you know, you're going to buy our adventure and join it. I want to make sure that you you have a fun time and it was well worth it. That's right. Yeah, to throw you a little bit of love you know, going through your Kickstarter and, and like looking at everything. Um, a, it was like inspiring to me, especially, you know, us kind of like living in, in our world and, and trying to build the universe. Mm-hmm. And it was, I was stoked to kind of read all about it, but also just like, you know, I love just how meticulous it was like in terms of like, Hey, this is the idea we're conveying. This is exactly what we're doing. And dude, like, you didn't give everything away. You know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. there's still a ton of mystery. Like, I just feel like it was, I felt like it was like super methodical and really well thought out. And it like, you know, it was inspiring for me to kind of see, um, especially all of us like working and and some of the things that we're doing, but I've got a question as you, you and Vinny were talking, you know, about being linear. Here's something in the creative world that some people hear and and, and wrestle with. Will you, do you consider your guys, the two of you, do you guys consider yourselves to be kind of like visionaries 
right? Because like working with Vinny, I know he's got a ton of vision. Building a world like this, you've got to have a good amount of vision, but you've got your partners as well. Mm-hmm. So, so to all the people out there who are like thinking about, you know, big picture, big story, you know, whether they're musicians or writers, like how much is it the vision side of things? And how much is it what you just said, dude, I just got to pound this out and grind this out. I mean, as far as for me personally, I actually don't, I don't think of myself as like a visionary. I, um, I would say, uh, Rick might, he's got, he's got really good long-term vision and scope. And of course I have, he, he used me, I have idea, a lot of ideas. He's like, you're a fucking idea factory. He's just me. Cause I'll just like throw stuff out left or right. And, and then we'll kind of sift through like what's good, what's not. Um, but that being said, as far as visionary, I'm very, when I, when I think of visionary, I think of very like, this is where I want to be. And it's very clear. And I'm going to get there. I feel like I'm, I'm a little more flexible in the sense of like, we'll see how it goes. Like we're going to make this thing and I'm going to start writing it. And I'm going to start creating this story or this world or this, this project. And we're going to see how we get there. And I'm just going to focus on what, I'm, you know, in the moment, the thing I'm doing being awesome that I'm creating right now. And then we'll see where that takes me. So I don't know if that doesn't necessarily, I just, I, I like the, I, I actually like thrive. I, I focus more on like the, the labor side of the creative process. I just, I, I don't know. I thrive on that. I enjoy it. Um, sometimes I like being I actually, sometimes I thrive being boxed in a little bit, which I think doesn't necessarily gel up with being a, like a quote unquote visionary where the whole limitations breed creativity type thing. Um, I, I thrive really well in that. Like you give me these parameters like, all right, well you got to do this, but you can't do this. You can't do this. And it has to be in this specific mindset. I look at that as like, fuck yeah, I'm going to find a really cool original way to make that happen. So I, I, I like that. I like being given a task and a difficult task and like figure it out. And then I focus on like cracking that puzzle. And like for me, for example, like I'm a drummer and I'm a writer. Mm-hmm. And the way I try and approach some writing things is if I had a Neil Peart drum kit with like 1 million pieces or whatever, you know, I could just go around and hit each thing once and be like, whoa, that was crazy. But <laughs> if I have a kick drum, a snare drum and a hi-hat, I can write the craziest stuff because I'm forcing myself to do something creative with what I'm given, you know? Um, so as far as like, I, right now is a very awesome time because like, Harmon quest was like massive, like as a podcast and like, mm-hmm. you know, the whole like campaign or whatever. Um, but now there's, um, I, I actually forgot the name of the show, but, um, Rob McElhaney from, uh, it's always Sunny has quest. A, Yep. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so there's like shows like that. Like it's like very much in the forefront of the mainstream right now, especially with like nerd culture and all that kind of stuff. Um, do you think that's playing into this specific campaign? Oh, absolutely. Yes, I think. And that's part of why uh, we're, we were both already fans of it, but that's part of why we, that definitely informed our decision to really invest in this project from a time and effort standpoint, because it's really having a moment. D&D and RPGs are really having a moment. And it's been kind of a build over the last decade where they've gotten, but just, yeah, to your point, there's Harm Quest. Critical Role is massive. Um, there's a bunch of different pop culture D and D related content now that's being created. And there's a huge demand. There's a ever growing demand for it. And people are getting hungrier and hungrier. So that definitely played a part into it. Um, one of our stretch goals that we already unlocked were we funded, we're going to create a, a pilot, a streaming pilot for Q games channel next year that was already funded and hit. So, it, and it's with like professional cast and like set design and music to play through um, the campaign live sick. that's so sick yeah man it's like you wake up one day and you have this thing and i'm sure probably it was a great feeling to just watch it evolve like right before your eyes right like you know and that's what like i'm trying to convey to you to like people out there who have big ideas that the big idea doesn't happen and doesn't unfold or manifest itself you know two days into a project you know you how long is this in the making for you essentially you know for me, it's pretty much exactly one year, a little bit longer. Rick had been kind of stewing, mulling on it and playing around with it for maybe two to three years. But and you're still, about, yeah. yes, so sorry. So you're still like five years out from this thing, like fully manifesting itself when you start talking about like, you know, casts and you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. and so like, you know, I always like to like, 
give people like a sense of like hope, you know, and like keep it posy. And it's just like, Hey man, like these things don't happen just like, just like that, you know? Yeah. Um, First and foremost, I tell people like make your thing, focus on making your thing and just get it done and then worry about everything else. It, none of it means anything. It doesn't, it doesn't, fucking mean a thing if you have an agent or a publicist or an outlet if you don't have the thing if you don't have your novel or your album like none of it means shit you have to make your thing first absolutely what were you gonna say Vinny? i I was just gonna say that you know uh your kickstarter funded in 40 minutes right (laughs) your first funding goal in 40 minutes and i think that there's some people who would look at that and go oh it was so quick but it was uh, 11 months in the making, man. Like mm-hmm. it was, took time, energy, prep, your your own financial backing between time and energy and whatever else had to go into it. Mm-hmm. And in that 40 minute time, there might be some people who look at it and go, 40 minutes, so easy, I could do that, you know? But they don't realize the ladder that you had to climb and the ladder that creatives have to climb, you know? You're yeah. literally, literally creating something out of nothing and you're building every component that goes along with it. You know, not only the story, not only the visual, not only the marketing, not only the future Mm -hmm. over the horizon line, man, shit that you can't even see, but you hope to get to, you're busy doing that. And like 40 minutes in, it's great for you and great for the team. And it's a high five, like we did it, but like there's so much that somebody who just like, came into it and said, yeah. this is a good idea. I'm backing it. This is awesome. Uh, it's so, it's so easy to do this, right? Oh, and, uh, do, do you know, <laughs> do, the last two weeks I have sent over a thousand personal messages to people through like Twitter, Facebook, anyone I'm, you know, that anyone that might be in the orbit of having interest I've sent, I've take, I've written and it's not a copy paste thing. I have sent over a thousand personal messages. She was like, Hey, how's it going? Do you might like, you know, this might be your thing. This is um, in the last 17 days, I've done 15 podcasts or live streams or thing, you know, going on, talking to people and promoting it. Like, yeah, we're, we're working. We're putting in the work. <laughs> we're hustling out here. That's awesome, man. And that's what it's, that's what ultimately it's about. Mm-hmm. But it's, it's, there's an engine, right. That drives everything. Right. And sometimes that's a creative end and sometimes that's a grunt work end. And it, And when I'm thinking about the teamwork side of it, there's a place for everybody. There's a place for somebody to go, I'm going to be crazy right now. I'm going to do a thousand cold emails to whoever. And then there's another dude in Chicago who just packed the ball went, Hey, I have a good idea for this like crazy wizard or this, whatever. Right. Like, and both, both are equally important for, for the Mm -hmm. team. Right. Like, yeah. And I'm not saying that your partner's smoking pot in Chicago by any means, but yeah. <laughs> maybe he is. I don't know. Like, it'd be awesome if he was. But all those things are, are, are have a place in the bigger picture to mm-hmm. get something done in such a grandiose way. Absolutely. Yeah. It's in, like I said, I think it comes down to honestly, it's, it's so cliche, like, like the hard work thing, of course. But as far as interacting with the team, it really comes down to just making sure you're putting in effort with how you communicate with each other and giving everyone a chance to be heard and don't and just take, just take a second and think before, you know, before you respond or send notes and just think where they're trying, you know, where they're coming from. And then just, and that goes so far, even if you don't agree on something and you've come to a point, you realize you're not going to agree on it. The fact that if you can acknowledge where they're coming, where other people are coming from or have in a collaborative environment goes so far. So it's just open communication, open, respectful communication with, and, and don't forget, you know, some human empathy too. Dude, I think you just, I think you just unlocked, you know, the key to world peace. <laughs> that's uh, that's what you just did. I mean, it's so true. Like we forget that, you know, about one another, you know, you know what I hate too, man. I I hate like, you know, I've been in, in different situations in organizations and even outside of organizations where it's like, oh, well, you know, like it's the creative person, so you've got to be really sensitive to them. Like, no, actually, no. We want you to be direct. Just tell me what the hell you're yeah. thinking and say it in a cool way so that we can keep working together. You know what I mean? And and we forget mm-hmm. that. You know. 
I think that's been one of the the biggest boons for me personally, Rick and I, is we really hit it off and are on the same wavelength in that regard where we have a very... Now, it's like when, when you're dealing with other people that you aren't necessarily as close to and there, you know, there's different... like The concentric circles, right? Rick yeah. and I are like in the same circle. We're super tight. We can talk. And we're at the point where we can literally call each other up and he can call me up and be like, hey, that thing you wrote, it fucking sucks. Here's why. Like, you need to do this. And I don't get upset. I'm like, okay, dude. Yeah, I'll fix it. Uh, I'll do this, 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 good to know. Or I can say it to him like, yeah, I don't really like, you know, I don't like that. So, but then, you know, the further out you go, you kind of, you know, then you have to make sure you're being respectful and compassionate of other people's feelings. But it's, we really like, we really work really well together because we can, we can be super candid with each other and it's not, and we, neither of us is going to be offended by it. We're going to take it as a, a challenge because we know we're better. We know we can do better. I know I can do better. It's like, I know I can get, I can do exactly what we're thinking. I know I can create exactly what we need for this situation. Thanks for the little bit of guidance and the feedback. I'm going to go come back and knock it out of the park next time. So it's, it, it's good to have those kinds of relationships too, where you can be very up, upfront with each other. But as long as both people have to be on that wavelength, you know, because because if one person's not, it goes real bad real fast. Dude, Patrick thought he was going to come on here and talk about his, his Kickstarter, his book, and his <laughs> game. He's like, world peace, saving people's marriages. <laughs> John is writing all this down. Like, yeah, this is great for me and my new, my new wife. Dude, you're killing it. Killing it, dude. It's awesome. Thank you. Oh, man. Dude, you just made me smile big. <laughs> like that was good stuff, man. Like I, I you know, I and the 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 cool thing about what you just were saying, right? And I think that when when you meet people that are in the same headspace as yourself in the creative world and it allows you to be like sort of honest with critique and workflow and everything. I think those are the people that you'll hold on to. You're talking about marriage from Jono, right? Like, but I'm talking about marrying that like sort of creative person that you see eye to eye with and that, and you go, I'm not really feeling that. Why? Uh, because of this, you know, and I've had that relationship with Obi, like where it's like, Hey, I don't feel it. He goes, dude, I, I'm not feeling what's doing. Okay, cool. Let's, let's fix, let's fix it. Right. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's what, what we're talking about is work that. That relationship of communication and mutual respect, that's something that you have to work at not only with yourself, but but with other people. Yeah. You know, you have to feel it yourself, and then that other person has to be on that same wave, wavelength, right? And especially when it's 13 people. I don't even know. Like I started to count in my head, like what you guys got going on. You have to be over yeah. 25 people that that are like thumbprints on there, like what I said, right? And uh I just much respect for being able to corral that into something awesome and something mm -hmm. I'll, I'll go on it. Visionary, man. When I was reading down, I was, this is awesome. And this has scope and this has like depth to it, man. And I was tripping out on it and I went, this is, this is a great project. And uh, just stoked that you're here sharing that with us of how to get over those humps uh, because yeah. ultimately that happens, man. Like, mm -hmm. you know, Th those cracks happen and you got to deal with it head on. Yeah. And it's, I think and I've talked about it a little, and uh, the one thing I want to reiterate too, is we hear a lot when it comes to things like criticism about whoever's receiving criticism, it's important to, to not take it personally and keep an open mind and understand, you know, you're trying to get better, but it's also really important for the person. I have this like rule for myself too. If you're the person giving criticism and I've talked about being respectful and kind, but doing it in a, in a way it's constructive. Another thing though is, if you, you have to be able to articulate why you don't, I, I believe if I can't articulate to you, why if it's, I don't like this. If I can't say why, maybe I'm wrong. I need to stop a second. Yeah. Cause if I, I have to be able to in easy to digest, understandable, like metrics say, I'm, I, this doesn't work for me. Here is X, Y, Z, why it does not work for me. Cause I think that also helps a lot with someone taking that credit, you know, understanding it's like, Oh, okay. Whereas if you're just like, yeah, it's not working for me where it's like, it's not working for me because it screws up this, you know, it kind of doesn't work with, it doesn't, it, it doesn't make sense because of this other thing over here. I, I think the, you have to be able to explain why too. And that's, that's really fair. important. That's I mean, it's, it, it speak clearly, speak loudly, 
and and don't be a dick man like mm -hmm. like you're working with people it's that you don't have to go after someone on a personal level when you're working together right like and but i i agree with what you're saying i think that you have to articulate what the problem is if you can't do that then you should kind of just let it simmer until you can mm -hmm. right you have to say i don't agree because and whatever that happens and you're doing it clearly you're doing it loudly and and hopefully in, in a way that it's not hurting somebody else's feelings right like mm -hmm. and you're not trying to be a dick about it and uh I get that, man, that you have to understand what you're feeling first, right? I don't like it because of X, Y, Z. Okay, cool. Like I can go at it that way. If you just, it's just rubbing me the wrong way. Like, and I've heard that, that before. I fucking hate that. Yeah. That does nothing. That accomplishes nothing. Cause then the other person is like, just upset. Like, but you have nowhere to go. Right. Cause you don't know what to do with it. Then you're just stuck in this uncomfortable place. <laughs> yeah, when you can be when you can be like more descriptive about like a taco you're eating, you know, like you know you have a problem, you know what I mean? <laughs> but like, you know, so like with all that being said, man, Patrick, totally not blowing smoke. Thank you so much for your time. Dude, your campaign and everything you're doing truly truly inspiring i am walking away inspired i'm walking away like you know rethinking some of the things that Vinny and i are, are you know uh working on at the moment and jano and all of us are kind of working on at the moment and it's it's really really cool to have great conversation like this and walk away like i'm like ready to go like like kick some ass like that's and it's not because you're so muscular but <laughs> <laughs> because of your work ethic but hey man like before you go dude plug away like tell us where we can find everything tell us how we can support um, yeah. Let us know everything you have going on. For sure. So, um, yeah, the main thing right now in this moment is the Red Opera, the D&D campaign. Um, we're recording this on September 17th. Uh, do you gentlemen know roughly when this is coming out? It'll be next Wednesday. Next Wednesday. Oh, perfect. So if you're hearing this, it will still be live because it's through the month of September. The Kickstarter ends October 1st at 10 a.m. Eastern. So you can go to... Um, you can go to Kickstarter search for the Red Opera. If you go to my Twitter at the Pat Edwards, it's my pinned tweet. There's a link there, or my website thepatedwards.com. There's a link there, and that's all. And all of my other stuff is there as well. Uh, if you like D and D or metal or both or either just one, if you're at all a D and D or RPG fan, you should check it out. It is a hundred. It is all original content. It is a completely original setting. I did all of the like settings and encounters and I didn't take essentially anything that already existed in the D and D verse. I created a completely new city, uh, completely new like puzzles and challenges for the players to get through all like the monsters or original creations. It's all, and it's all very unique. It's all, it's all, it's going to be a very unique experience for you. Um, if you're, uh, and if you're listening to this after September, you can still pre-order. We have it set up, so that'll go right into pre-orders through Indiegogo after the fact. So it's still available. So at the Pet Edwards, if you like sci-fi, if you think Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy would be a fun book, it's already it's one of my favorite books, but if a version of that that was more Americanized with aliens that get drunk all the time and say fuck a lot, <laughs> check out my book Space Tripping. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and the one last thing, I don't even think it's said in the bio because it's been in post-production. I wrote a short film that was shot completely in quarantine over a video call that is almost done with post-production and it will hit the film festival circuit in the near future uh, called Joining Call. So it's about eight friends trying to play D&D &D over like a video call and during quarantine and life keeps getting in the way. That's like awesome. kids. That's awesome kids or the couple that's squabbling with each other on camera or connection it. issues yeah that's awesome that's cool man well thank you so much man that was amazing thank you thanks man. had a lot of fun <laughs> See you, man. Did I tell you or did I tell you that the man was a badass? I told you and there he was. How inspiring was that story, man? Super, man. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. Yeah, and you got a, a vocal session coming up here like right after this too. So are you going to go out there and start singing about dragons? and then, uh... We're, we're going to make some stuff happen. I'm going to 
I'm actually I'm singing on some uh, some stuff for King for King Django. Nice. And then we're gonna we're gonna work on some other reggae things that uh, may or may not dwell in Inevitables world. I don't, I don't know. Badass. We shall see. Well, I guess since we're kind of in plug mode, anybody else have anything to plug while we're we're talking about plugging stuff? You know what? I'm, I'm keeping quiet on my side of things, man. There's a, a ton going on on the production side of Inevitables, but and there's some other things too, but it's all work mode now. And then in the next couple of weeks, you'll see everything start to, to uh, open up. And I'm excited for that because it was work mode and like, sort of like letting everybody know during when uh, the Kickstarter was going on. Right. And then when it ended, it's just been, okay, here's prepping for the end of what the Kickstarter was and will be but there's so much more else that's that we're pushing into. So now it's just a build mode. And then once that engine kind of comes out again, it goes to Christmas, which is wild, man. Wild. Crazy town. Then, uh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> uh, also my plugs, uh, the anthology maybe someday is now available uh, to pre-order in previews world. So, Nice. There's a, a code. You just go to a local comic shop and you go, hey, I want maybe someday from a wave blue world. And then uh, this week, by the time this comes out, our new coffee company will have launched. It's called Rootless Coffee. Yeah. We have all of our bags are uh, designed by like comic and multimedia artists. And we have a really cool Twin Peaks one that's debuting this week. So lots of cool stuff. Very cool. Very Way cool. To go, Jonna. You're winning at life right now. Great job. <laughs> dang just got, got a new wife got a new coffee company got a comic book coming out man you are everything's coming up jono <laughs> yeah, <and look. laughs> well it's in these risky times you got to take the highs with the lows baby but i say you're on a high right now as for me my only plug is as always go check out ace tucker space trucker online uh, ace tucker space trucker 2 is out right now in all your finest bookstores online um, it is the further adventures of Ace and the gang, and it is a hoot, and it is endorsed by Patrick Edwards, who uh, <laughs> may or may not have read it. He read the first one. He, he, he thought it was pretty good, although both of our books seem to have drunk truckers in it. I don't know. Maybe we were separated at birth. But yeah, kids, check him out on Twitter at, at the Pat Edwards. The link for the Red Opera is there. And if you want to check out more Concentric Circles stuff, check us out at concentriccircles.cc. And I guess that'll do it for us. Uh, anybody else have anything to say other than bye byes? That's no, it. Man. Thank you. Just the bye bye. Great job, everybody. That was sick. Bye bye. Take care, all y'all.